Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at the Halftime Show on Stock Charts TV. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at Chaking Analytics, and we do this every Monday, middle of the day. We call it halftime because it's dead center of the trading day. It's April 4th, 2022, and we've got a few things to talk about today. One, uh, we're going to do another scan, a predefined scan that's on the ACP platform. It's the 50 crossing over the 200. That's an upward sloping scan, obviously. And uh, just looking for the differences between RSI and some of the other things. We're going to look at the rating, of course, bit from Jake and Analytics, because we combine fundamentals and technicals. And that's really what we're all about here. We're trying to find not only the technical setups, but also the fundamental ones. But Primarily, we want to make sure that the market is behind the idea, no matter what the fundamentals or technicals are saying. Obviously, if the technicals are good, we're going to see a tailwind. The other thing I want to talk about today is uh, a name that we called out. Now, again, uh, to our private subscribers here on Chaking Analytics, we do uh, a morning note um, and weekly videos, just like we're doing here on the Halftime Show. But we call out some individual names and ideas from the environment that we're seeing, uh, shifts and themes and narratives. And we're trying to find you know, sort of thread the needle into finding where are the value plays. We found one uh, back in early March, about a month ago, we called it out and then reiterated it on uh, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. And that produced about a 20 or 25% gain, depending upon where you were able to buy it. So we're going to look at that. That's the Brazil ETF, EWZ, and EWZS, which is the small cap there as well. So we'll take a look at those two and see uh, how they fared. Okay, let's get to the charts and see what we see. Okay, everybody, we're here back at the uh, Chaken Analytics platform. And I realized uh, from some comments and some feedback that I've got, uh, I haven't really gone over the Chaken Analytics platform. So I won't do most, you know, we're not going to spend a lot of time on the video today doing that. But I will, you know, kind of just run through some of the particulars. So here we have, again, our morning notes are posted here. We, we post several of them so you can get to them if you met, missed a couple of days. And then we keep an archive. But when, when our users open up the, the particular uh, application, they're greeted with an array of setups here, trend changing names, uh, money makers, the way we define them, and, and everything is defined here, strong stocks in the Russell 3000 with strong cash flow and price to sales, right? So we have a factor based model, it's 20 factors, and we talk about mostly fundamentals, but obviously we want to overlay technicals in there. And so Again, we, had, uh, we have everything listed here, what we talk about uh, day to day for our, our subscribers. And on the video uh, from March 17th, we basically called out um, a name here, uh, the EWZ, the Brazil ETF. And so right around $32, it had, we had initially called it out, said this is one to watch, buy it on a pullback. And here we got it obviously around there. And today, uh, EWZ is trading, I think close to 40, but I, I don't know if it hit 40 yet. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, just about there, 30, 31, 39.28. And looks like the high is uh, just around 39.52. So right back from this pullback, again, we saw the relative strength change. We saw obviously an oversold condition, excellent, amazing money flow, and then obviously to push higher. Why? Well, Brazil is one of the number one exporters, not coffee, because I think I thought so myself, but they're at the uh, their top three exports are soybeans first, uh, crude oil second, and iron ore and other concentrates third. So guess what? A lot of that's being disrupted overseas between Russia and Ukraine, and a lot of things are happening. And obviously, EWZ is being pointed to um, as one of the beneficiaries on, you know, for an unfortunate reason. Uh, but the point is, is we're trying to find names to make money on, and obviously that's what we called out. Same thing here. And again, the small caps were a little bit more risky, but around that fifteen dollar range, we got up to very close to eighteen. And obviously, that's an excellent move in a short amount of time. You know, on a $15 stock, you get it's about 20% or so, um, $3. So, again, that's kind of the service that we offer. But I came here to talk about uh, not only what we do, but also what it, Stock Charts does. And I came and found, obviously, this predefined scan. I love this, right? You got this. It's all set up for you. I mean, it's basically turnkey. You go in through the scans. And I got 43 results. Not all of them are going to be, you know, the type of setup that everyone's looking for. But obviously, I have a preference and I kind of look at what's going on. And I obviously want to make sure that I'm looking in the thematic areas of the market. So the first one that comes up here, which I did like, I'm only going to look at six, believe it or not, out of these 43 names, uh, was AEM. So if I type in AEM on our system, and we'll go back to the 
uh, stock chart system. Obviously, what do we see here? We see uh, you know, a, a name that has pulled back significantly, held some support areas here. It's pretty choppy. This is a tough one to trade. But when you start to see moves like this, where it moves above you know, the 200 day, and obviously I should add, I'll do this real quick. So the simplicity of the system, 50, I like a little thicker line, hit close and go. There's my 50 day and 200. So look at that. The scan had not, you know, notified me of this particular name. It's just starting to change. Now that's a trend change. And there's no doubt, right? Look what happened last time. But sometimes it gets ahead of itself and pulls back. We like those setups, right? Who doesn't really? Um, so if you look at AEM, our relative strength is also a uh, changing trend. We are all oversold. And so the setup is interesting because it's in the middle of the band. It's not overbought. But again, a strong stock and a strong industry. But we're neutral. Why are we neutral? Well, fundamentally, on the financial side of things, it's getting a very bearish rating. Why? Well, cash flow, debt to equity is neutral, but price to sales and price to book are a little stretched, right? And obviously so, because look, it's a $15 billion market cap on a $4 billion in sales, pays an okay dividend, but neutral to me has always meant a few things, that it's really as much upside side as downside, but the other side of that coin is, it typically will follow the recent trend. So if the recent trend is up, that neutral move you know, could be signaling a bigger move higher. So it held support. Uh, the stock looks interesting here, and obviously it plays into the themes of metals and mining, and a little just history on what they do. Um, you know, obviously you can get, you know, you can find this anywhere, but um, you're talking about production of minerals in uh, Canada, Mexico, Finland, and operations throughout the Northern uh, business and Southern business segments. So you've got a lot going on here in this one little name, one you want, might want to consider. And you found it just by doing the scan real quick. Here's another one, AGI, now it's a gold miner. Um, interesting change here in trend. Let's go take a look. I already noticed I'm kind of running out of time. I got to get going. Uh, here at 868 on the price. Again, oversold, relative strength change. Now, this one we have a bullish rating on. And again, financials are a little bit better, but earnings aren't there. So you're not getting everything you want. It's not 100% uh, you know, uh, fundamentally on your side. But technicals and experts are kind of into it. Analysts rating trends neutral. Insiders are selling, but there's no short interest. Again, there's less short interest than typically. Uh, on these kind of names. So maybe, maybe you see some short covering here. I don't know. But my point is, is that uh, we found it and it looks like a, a trend change and it's a bullish name you know, on our system. Uh, I'm going to look at this one, AQN. This is a utility company. Wow. Interesting looking chart. Um, just basically just have, I said, wow, because it, the scanner is just telling me uh, exactly when this is happening uh, on that 50 to 200 day cross. So when I go to AQN, Again, a very interesting setup, but a neutral name, right? So we don't have everything on our side here, and the financials are kind of weak. Again, from a valuation standpoint, price to sales, it's way out of whack. Uh, Long-term debt to equity is high, but they have good cash flow to support that. So you got to kind of squint between the lines and look for positives here. The technicals are just starting to firm up, really. You can see that on the chart. And then on a longer term, if I go back to the ACP platform, and I squeeze this chart a little bit, you know, look, the highs are, you know, recent, uh, they're kind of right in this area of around $18, $19. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, about $17 or so on the high, closer to 18. Um, but there's some room here and there could be further room to run. This is something you have to kind of monitor. All right. So the next one I had to skip around a little bit was, uh, CLB. Now this is interesting. When I first read the name, uh, maybe you're thinking what I was thinking, maybe it's a biotech, but it's actually an oil and an equipment company. So let's take a look, CLB. And obviously that plays into the narrative of higher oil prices and maybe higher for longer. If you're reading anything out of the, uh, the major research firms like Goldman, JP Morgan, Bank of America, you know, a lot of that narrative is being displayed in some of their daily notes. Again, a neutral name, right? But starting to change trends slightly. And I just kind of expanded this really quick. Uh, it's a small cap name. The sales are basically about 470 million, very high PE, almost no yield. Um, but really not much on its side fundamentally. So again, this one be, would be more risky from the fundamental standpoint. Market is not totally convinced because I don't see the relative strength really powerfully moving like it did back here. But you've got to be cognizant that earnings haven't been great. And so 
maybe they have something that's interesting. I don't know exactly what they do. You have to look into that. But um, this is one that's kind of a mixed picture. The technicals are there, but the uh, fundamentals are kind of lagging. So you got to be careful. I mean, that's why when you look at these screens, you want to look at everything surrounding the name. It's in the right industry, but it's just not um, setting up properly here. So if I go to look at uh, Insight, again, this is a healthcare. This is a biotech. Uh, very overbought on the RSI. Really, really high, but it's got some power here. I mean, the stock just moved from what's that, $68, $69 up to uh, close to 82 um, so you're seeing the relative, uh, the, the change in trend from the 50 and 200 day, really at the top, obviously, right? But if I pull in this ticker to our system, what do I see? I see an actually a bullish name here, uh, very large market cap, so well-established company. Uh, revenue is about $3 billion or so. Maybe that's going to improve. I don't know. Stock's up 1.5% today. And you got a mixed bag financially, but it is equaling out to a bullish setup on the financials, okay? So price to book's a little rich, but price to sales is not. And then you go back to experts, they're liking it. Not a lot of short interest yet, insider buying. So some positives here, right? So again, more of a more, uh, more expensive name at $80. But again, the point being is it's a little overbought. And how do I know that? Obviously, we got an overbought signal here, huge money flow. A pullback would be nice. And obviously, on the regular 14 RSI, you can see it's really living up to its high level. So look what happened the last couple of times. If you can be patient and there's no immediate pending news, um, you know, potentially this could pull back and maybe get a better entry point back at these areas of, you know, $74, $75. You never know. Um, and then last one I want to look at, again, kind of plays into the inflationary trend, SILJ, which is an ETF. Right, silver miners ETF. And let's go look at the chart, how it's setting up here on the ACP platform. Again, really nice, you know, interesting play here. Um, you know, obviously these are no guarantees, but I do like the fact that the RSI has already pulled back, held the midpoint, and the stock hadn't really kind of just meandered sideways. I don't want to call this a cup and handle, but you know, you really got to squint to see those patterns. But um I think it's an interesting it's an interesting setup, but let's go look at the chart here. So when we look at the ETFs, we kind of look at these a little bit differently. We can see the amount of assets inside the ETF. We can see the average daily volume, the beta, the dividend yield, and the expense ratio. Um, it's a passive uh, ETF as far as we uh, know based on our data. And, you know, it's kind of right in the middle of its range. You see that move higher, a slight pullback, oversold, bullish, great relative strength. And strong money flow. These are interesting names. I got to tell you, man, 15 minutes goes fast and I might, my counter might be off a little bit, but I tried to get in all the stocks I wanted to talk about. Wanted to show you a little bit about our check-in system, what you see as a user if you decide to use our, uh, our particular uh, platform. But again, the plug-in is available there when you combine fundamentals and the amazing technicals that are on stock charts already. I think you get a powerful combination. So thanks again for tuning in. Bring back uh, you know, some of the feedback to the YouTube area, and uh, we'll try to you know, interact on that level as well. But thanks again, and really appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.